Hello YouTube, this is Hinsug. My real name is Aaron Kamenzen, and I am convinced I have something to contribute to the discussion of autism that I'm seeing online, particularly, uh, particularly with the autism spectrum disorder, or Asperger's as it used to be called in uh, the old DSM. And if you read online, you'll see there's, there's kind of this murky, almost new feeling sort of autism with really high functioning autistics that are so high functioning that it kind of seems to, to blur the line on whether or not they're really autistic or if maybe there's some other explanation. So many of us like know there's something socially different about us and, and you can feel it. You know you're, you're quirkier and more idiosyncratic than normal people and you're just looking for an explanation because so many people feel like there's something socially missing in them. My, uh, through my whole life, through my whole youth, up until just recently, I've been obsessed with Myers-Briggs type indicator, the personality typing with the four dimensions. I am an INFP. That's how I've uh, identified myself uh, really for my whole, basically for my most of my whole life and it's been rewarding like it's it's been a, a great way to take pride in my quirkiness and and and, and feeling and, and knowing you know on a deep level that i do feel different you know in in myers briggs if uh, if there's nothing else to take away from it there's this kernel of truth in it that says that uh, there's this underlying message that people are different and there's nothing you can do to, to really even force them to not be different. You, you damage a person if you try to force them to not be who they are. And it's even, it, you know, the other part of the underlying message is there's a celebration of, of the, the diversity of personality. And uh, in discussions of autism, there's this idea of neurodivergence, you know, being excited that you know, there's pros and cons, a different way to be, and you, there's maybe different ways to cope with those differences and maybe different ways to frame how you look at them and, and feel about them and perceive them. But uh, in the end, it's, it's about loving diversity and accepting yourself and celebrating yourself and uh, making your sense of identity deeper and richer. Well, the thing I can't shake is from my years of identifying as an INFP, there's this uncanny similarity to how that feels and, and, and how I see that and how well a lot of the narrative and explanations and descriptions you read on INFP can map over to Asperger's, these high functioning autistics. You know, many INFPs go through life feeling like something's missing and you know some of them fall into the trap of almost feeling defective and of course that's not the case uh, they have all kinds of strengths that they need to embrace and this is already sounding a little bit like Asperger's right feeling defective even though you're not just because you're socially different and I want to do kind of a devil's advocate and saying, well, let's try to explain away. Like maybe, so INFPs are rare, rare, right? Perhaps as rare, maybe slight, only slightly less common than uh, high functioning autistics uh, to begin with. So maybe there's some kind of connection here where people are deciding they're autistic when it's really just a set of personality traits that they can... Uh, they don't have to look at as a deficit or a disorder um, because when you're an INFP so here let's start with the traits so I think already in the nature of extroverts so most people are extroverts right it uh, so many people are extroverts you can kind of expect this sort of warm pro-social behavior where almost all social interactions are are inherently rewarding you know they get their splash of dopamine and serotonin out of it right and um, 
in just normal social contexts. And I think that INFPs are social creatures too, but where you get your energy, where your energy flows from, what you have to offer is in, from your internal world. And I think that, you know, you want to share a lot of that stuff with other people, but it, it's, it's just different, you know? And then there's this aspect of the intuition side of things, which it c colors what type of information you tend to. So most people, I would say, are sensors, right? They, and, it, and what sensing is, is you attend to, the information you attend to most is more direct and concrete. Things you can perceive with your five senses, feeling, touch, sight, just very concrete, very direct. And with intuitive types, they're more, uh, they're, their perception is tuned to kind of these big picture abstract ideas and, and looking for patterns in the world. Um, and they speak abstract. And I, I think it's connect. Uh, it's very much connected to another personality typing system called the big five, um, with a trait called, uh, openness. And it's very much connected to intellectual curiosity and people high in this trait are less common, but people high in intellectual curiosity, they treat social interaction as an occasion to share ideas. You know, they have these special interests that perhaps they're always trying to connect, make new connections with into ideas, they, things they encounter in the world. It's like, uh, I think, a lot of INFPs and people high in openness, they fall in love with a body of information, which is kind of like the autistic's uh, narrow, deep set of interests that monopolize their concentration and what they talk about with other people, right? If you talk to an autistic person, one of the symptoms is, um, you know, they'll drone on about just their, their narrow set of interests. Well, if you fall in love with a body of information, it's like you're your frame of reference f f for understanding the world and trying to connect back, uh, make new connections in this, in this world to expand your understanding with this framework, you know, and I think Myers Briggs is a, is in, in just psychology in general already kind of has this vibe, you know, the other uh, stereotype about autistics is they love categorizing things. Well, personality typing, you know, is about, really categorizing, right? And just having this, you know, autistics are very um, articulate. So you're kind of housing these ideas in these words and loading them with all sorts of meaning that maybe some people don't think is, is very normal, right? But you're really just trying to have this granular level, deeper understanding with something and you need words to pack those things into so that you can work with them and make new connections. So when you're talking to somebody high in openness, it, it very much has that flavor, right? Of being overly abstract and maybe thinking too much, right? There's something I think most INFPs get and certainly autistics get, oh, you're thinking too much. Well, the autistic explanation is it's out of necessity, right? Because you're, if you're socially different, and you're, you're coping with your, you know, you're not used to dealing with your different set of gestures and, you know, being too hyper-focused on certain information, it, you know, it's almost out of, you know, it's like you're learning to socialize. It's like you become a social scientist and you're trying to figure out how to do it properly. Well, I think with INFPs, you know, a lot of it's just, you get maybe bored with the normal rules of normal rules of socializing. Like I, I think INFPs, they're they're so thoughtful and empathic, and ultimately interested in people and their psychology and how you know and how it relates back to themselves and and kind of big picture looks at how it all works. You know, you do end up with somebody who's peculiar and who can kind of you know strike people as odd. But I think if you're really high in the openness trait or you're like a deeply, like really uh, extreme on the 
intuitive side of Myers Briggs, there is something weird about that, and it's a great explanation for you know why I'm so gosh dang weird. How why I'm this way, you know. And couple that with being an introvert, you know, and not uh, where socializing just takes a lot of energy. You know, it's um, it's a good recipe for for wondering why you can't be more perfectly extroverted and uh, so excited to hop into those social situations that other people do and do so naturally. You know, w almost without thinking, they, 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 they flop into a mold. Well, INFPs are not interested in molds and being in a mold. And I, I think autistics, you know, that's, if they're not fitting into a mold naturally anyway, if, if they're always, you know, not as a matter of choice, not in the mold, you know, it's, it's, there's something alienating about it. And you, I, I've reached a point in my life now where, you know, I, I, I spend too much time in solitude and my appetite for solid, for solitude is, is really become excessive and, and I've tried to come up with all sorts of explanations. Maybe, maybe it's not just INFP, maybe it's avoidant personality disorder, or now I've got my first murmurings from people that, Hey Aaron, maybe, maybe you're on the spectrum. And I think a lot of maybe introverted intuitives, not just INFPs, maybe even some of the extroverted intuitives, you know, get this question mark about why they're peculiar and they're at risk of getting tagged with this autism label, you know? Um, so there's also the issue of, so let's go into some more symptoms and explain some more of them away. So there's uh, eye contact being unusual. Well, if you're an INFP, I think one of the things about INFPs is you're, you are most likely a pretty socially anxious person. I think social anxiety, you know, just being as sensitive as an INFP, sensitive and socially thoughtful as an INFP is, I think it comes with a natural amount of anxiety. And when you look at somebody's eyes, you know, with autistics, it's, it's distracting, right? Well, I think that's a good word for INFPs too. It's like too much intimacy, too much information. If you're trying to have a conversation and focus on information, I feel like almost the need to look away and kind of enter my headspace to kind of facilitate uh, communicating what I, whatever idea we're, we're working on, right? So the other thing about INFPs is they're, they're the idealists, right? You know, this, this type of person that's concerned with ethics and logic and, and digging for truth and... Uh, and having this like sea of identity that they're 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 swimming through in in life, and um, as part of that, if you're this sensitive idealistic type, and you're prone to anxiety and feeling different, I think that kind of makes you more likely to be high in trait neuroticism, which is part of the big five, which is like the negative emotion. Um, uh, trait and you know that comes with a lot of frustration and more likelihood to experience depression or maybe autistic meltdowns you know or even some of the sense sensory issues that autistics have like uh, you know for example perhaps if you're in an uncomfortable social situation around people you're not sure about your cortisol maybe goes up and maybe like there's certain types of shirts that have like a coarse distracting fabric and if I'm just in solitude maybe it's not as much of an issue issue but I think if your cortisol goes up little sensitivities to things that pull you out of your head are you know they're an issue and, and maybe that's where the uh, sensory part of autistics come from Na naturally there's genuine autism right and and some of the, you know like a lot of autistics are really sensitive to loud noise you know I I think me in general, I'm actually less sensitive than average people to a lot of things, you know, like I, I play music outrage, like I, I, my hearing's probably slightly going out <laughs> because of how loud I listen to my music. There's <laughs> enormous speaker behind me and a gigantic subwoofer right here. Anyway, um, and there's, 
there's also so that explains away some of the sensory stuff and there's also the issue of executive functioning deficiencies in executive functions with autistics and i have being an infp you know if my idea of the kind of the the perfect example of somebody who is like on their game with executive functions is the ESTJ. And if you look into that type, they're, they're so much about organizing the world to be this efficient, orderly thing that flows like a, a well-oiled machine, right? You know, they're like the legs and the backbone of a structured society, right? And to me, that that's what, where you really get your your executive functions they make decisions they're they're eager to make decisions quickly and the world is just a more logical concrete place and if that's the type of information that you you attend to then you're just you're fluid and fast with it and, and good at it and infps my explanation for not being as organized and efficient and structured you know, and like quick, like ESTPs and ESTJs, they're, they're just f fast about so many things. Um, where INFPs will struggle with, you know, easy decisions <laughs> sometimes, or they'll, they'll, they'll live their life so spontaneous in such a spontaneous way that, you know, it, it perhaps it seems deficient if you're an ISTG, ESTJ watching an INFP, it's, it's maybe maddening. And, um, you know, this is with autistics too, you know, maybe they'll, you know, spend a whole day with some repetitive OCD like thing. Like I, I have OCD too, which probably is another sign that I, I actually do have autism, you know, or, or at least I'm on the spectrum, right? Cause there's, there's something OCD like about a lot of things about autism. And if you, you read online, INFPs, you know, there's just so many things that that kind of have that flavor of obsessively going through thoughts. And, you know, I'm a, pr as INFP go, INFPs go, I'm pretty orderly. Like, I like having a clean environment. You know, there's certain things that are disordered, you know, disorderly and chaotic. But by and large, I'm probably on the orderly end of you know what an INFP is but there's nothing organized about the way I live my life you know certainly not like an ESTJ that get like on s these kind of direct straight line paths to to concrete goals right um and kind of going along with that is uh, another big five trait um conscientiousness Conscientious is, is uh, kind of the orderly uh, function in that system. And it's kind of like even like the hardworking uh, responsibility function. Like if you think of the world as just this big bucket of tasks that need to be completed, people high in conscientiousness want to have take do their part and take hold and be responsible for, for some of those tasks and, and feel like they have a function. And I don't want to say INFPs are lower in conscientiousness, but I, I think it's manifested differently. You know, the sense of responsibility maybe is just inherently less uh, concrete. Like, you know, maybe it, it has, a, it's like maybe there's a, 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 ge a genetic difference in a human being that has these traits um, surface that has, you know, where you, you get a person that is more head casing and cerebral that gets focused on whether or not things are rational, whether or not things are ethical. And, you know, it's, it's not always just a, a clear, straightforward sprint towards, you know, the most logical thing, you know, it's exploratory. It's like if the world is yin and yin, yin and yang, INFPs, I think are, are the yin, maybe a lot of, there's a lot of kind of mechanical sort of, uh, Autistics, like I, I don't think a lot of autistic people will, will relate to this, but you know, which is partly why I want to do this in video form. Maybe there's more INFPs out there that kind of identify with the way I am. You, you can see 
I'm a quirky, and hopefully you, you get the vibe that I'm a thoughtful person, and I certainly am, right? Like, I take pride in that. But, you know, maybe there's other autistics that are, maybe a lot of autistics are ISTJs, right? And that'd be interesting to know, you know, especially with the stereotype that autistics are more interested in things rather than people. You know, I can kind of see people, I think, even perceive me that way because a lot of my world, you know, I spend in solitude fussing with video games and gadgets and ideas, researching some crazy thing, you know, very autistic traits, but also very INFP traits. You know, I mean, how many INFPs are professors? You know, probably, probably there is a disproportionate amount of INFPs or just intuitive feelers or introverted intuitives in general in, uh, you know, in academia, like the, the really high-minded ones, like professors especially, you know, try, like that are trying to be the cutting edge on the body of information they've fallen in love with. And probably if there's anything, any missed step I've taken is I think I have INFPs are neurotic enough and they, they feel alienated about the world enough that they spend, you know, they'll, they'll fall a little bit too behind in the, in the solitude area and they won't, they won't kind of get, you know, their feet dug into the side of academia where they're more engaged in the, in the world in, uh, in like a fulfilling way. You know, like probably autistics have this situation too, like probably if we were using their strengths, we would get them in dug into those areas where they just can can let loose and do the deepest dives that they can and it'd be rewarding for them. But you know, life is uh is not simple and it's full of painful things and it's not perfect, right? And and I think a lot of us, especially on the introverted side, you know, you just you just start finding out that uh, solitude you you build up barriers to protect yourself, and if you if you can have this list of excuses to afford yourself more solitude, then then you do it, and that's just such a more. I think if you're an INFP, and certainly autistic, you uh, you afford yourself every opportunity to be to be solid uh solitary which is not a neurotypical thing you know that sounds like uh probably that sounds like some form of hell for neurotypical extroverts you know especially estps and estjs um that's probably just basically unconscionable um but for some reason natural for infps or perhaps it's something, it's just one of the skills that uh, people high in uh, intellectual curiosity in general have that they can be, they can adapt themselves to having rewarding internal worlds. And even right here, I am a social creature. I get ex I've gotten ex so excited about my internal world and my time spent with personality typing and now I'm trying to find some way to share it. Um, anyway, this is probably already a little bit too long so I'm going to cut myself off but uh, thank you for watching and I just hope this generates some discussion about higher functioning autist autism or or not you know maybe maybe we'll find out that you can be an INFP that's lower functioning um, and some of these traits manifest themselves in in almost like a slightly similar way or maybe you know there is like this brand of autism that isn't autism it's just people dealing with being an INFP like read about INFPs it's it, it can't be a coincidence that so much of it maps perfectly onto autism anyway thank you for listening to me and see you later